So as we think about what it's like to be on a team that's thriving and connected, one of the things that's important to accomplish that is to actually physically be present with one another. Um, And so as we established the Omni House and built this incredible space for our team to come together, we were starting to think about is there some sort of burden that the team is facing to do that? And really it was triggered because we have a few people that don't live in the immediate surrounding area. So we have a couple of people in South Jersey, um, someone in New York City, and recently had someone join us in Boston. And so we were debating as a leadership team, would we cover the cost of travel for this new person who lives in Boston, thinking about how it's a much further journey for her from Boston to Philadelphia. And we went down the path that all normal companies do. And we thought, well, maybe we'll set a radius. We'll set a distance from the office and just cover people who are outside that radius, um, which is probably very standard practice. And as we started thinking about that, it didn't jive with who we are as a company and our you know focus on equity. And so we really just paused and said, why not just reimagine how we think about work and all the ways we do it? And why don't we just pay for everyone to come to work, regardless of the distance that they live from the office, whether that's miles and tolls or a train or an airplane and hotels. It fundamentally, once I saw it, I couldn't unsee that it's just a really stupid thing that we all have done. We all used to go to an office for five days and we used to pay to go to that office to get paid. So we weren't actually making the salary that was listed on that compensation band that was given to us in our offer letter. So we're just not going to do it. We're just not going to do that and do things that make sense. And it makes sense to not make people choose between their personal spending and budget and physically getting themselves to a workplace. Right. We had a couple examples, I think, in the meeting with the team as you rolled it out that I thought were, were really interesting. I think uh, Tim had said his wife, they calculated they spent like $10,000. 10 or 12000 he said, yeah. Commute back and forth to her job. But she just left and, and to me, I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Like I live 25 minutes away. Half the time I probably won't put my mileage in, but I will when I Uber, when mm-hmm. we're having events, I will, I will when we Uber. Um, but thinking about that, like, that is, that's a significant amount of money, no matter how much money you make, that's a mm-hmm. significant amount of money that you make or that you're spending on getting to work, getting to and from work. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was like, uh, like, it's awesome that we're doing it, but the, to feel it for other people, the way that that has an impact for them was, was incredible that the team shared some of those stories as well. Mm-hmm. And we talked about it as a team that were creating equity so people don't have to reduce their own pay and have a financial burden to go to work to get paid, but also that some people will benefit from the policy financially, potentially a little more than others. And in that discussion, we challenged it a little bit. So it's not about gaining something through this policy. It's just not losing. And some people have to travel further and longer. And that costs more to be on a plane or a train or drive from a further distance. And so the equity is still there. If you live five minutes from the Omni house, great. It takes you five minutes to get here and it's a dollar 25 in gas. If you live 300 miles away, that's more like a thousand dollars to come for two days. And that is a significant impact when someone's making a financial decision to take a job or not. And we just didn't want people to have to weigh that into their factor of choice. Right, especially for the people that have to travel in and do overnights and be away from their families. Mm -hmm. Um, That shouldn't be something that comes out of their pocket either. I remember when I first started working, um, having to get a monthly pass to get from the suburbs of Philadelphia into the city of Philadelphia, and it was $225 a month. I had to time it just right when I bought it, so I had enough money in my bank account. It was a real issue in terms of how I was budgeting my personal spend. I couldn't you know, go out to dinner sometimes because I knew I had to buy that stupid train ticket. And hopefully that's something our team never has to grapple with. And I think your point about the Ubers too is also an important one because we also want our team to be safe. And there's so much danger involved with, you know, drinking or consuming anything that's going to alter your state and then being behind a wheel. I very unfortunately had a coworker actually pass away from a car accident after a company event several years ago. So it stands out to me very specifically that being safe and not having to feel like you're forced into a choice because of a financial burden is not a decision I ever want someone to have to be put in. Agree. And that's why I say that because I, I, get made fun of sometimes because I'll Uber everywhere. If I'm going to have one drink, I Uber because I don't feel comfortable driving if I have any level of intoxication. And that's not just for me. It's for the other people on the road because similarly, and in my childhood, when I was in middle school, one of my brother's really good friends died in a drunk driving accident and it forever changed my view on getting behind the wheel. 
So I want to, I want to model that for the team that if you're going to come into the, to the office or go to a team event and have any drinks, just Uber. Even if you go home and you're like, yeah, I probably could have driven. Oh, well, you get a drive home. And that's better than taking the risk and the unfortunate consequences that could come with it. Absolutely. So our team can just be together, be safe, and not feel like there's any alternate impact to allowing them to do that. I'm really excited about this policy because I've never heard of anything like it. And when we shared it with the team, it was really incredible to hear their feedback on it. Your point about one of the team members acknowledging it was tens of thousands of dollars for you know his spouse to commute. I hadn't even considered that side of it. So it's really, I think, something that will differentiate us, not just as an organization, but as people who really, truly put our policies and dollars where they matter. And that's to support our team. And you know how I feel about benefits. Mm-hmm. They should really benefit <laughs> teams. So often we have, you know, I, we, we talked about like, you know, would we stick with unlimited PTO? Would we reimagine what that looks like? And we were laughing because it's like, yeah, we talked about this being like such a benefit to the team, but really unlimited PTO was something that uh, one leadership team decided to do at some point because it was less of an administrative burden on them and they wouldn't have to pay people out when they left. Mm-hmm. That's not really a benefit to the employee. It seems like one, it's mass as one because you can take as much time off as you want. But then we also know that people take less time off when they have unlimited mm-hmm. PTO. So how can we really put our money where our mouth is and make sure that the team feels like you're getting ahead of their needs and that there's no burden on them at any point in time? That's such an interesting one you started to spill into in terms of paid time off, because we've been having the debate around that quite a bit. And some of the more like modern approaches to time off that the one that I keep hearing most is this idea of minimum time off because unlimited ha- all the studies show that people take less time. I don't think our team struggles with that, fortunately, because we are very aggressive about making sure people go on vacation and don't, you know, communicate in any way with the teams so they can truly disconnect. I congratulation when I started putting out of office on the calendar. I really appreciated <laughs> that positive reinforcement. We were happy for you finally to disconnect. Yeah, you're taking time off. I say, thanks, guys. Thanks. It's a really sweet to do it. It's the evolution of that unlimited is because people don't have a number, they kind of forget or don't, you know, take as much meaningful action toward it. Or I've heard that they don't feel like they've earned it. Earned it or feel like, well, what's the right number? I don't want to look like the bad actor here that I took too much. Um, And so this idea of minimum time off is something that I've been chatting with a couple other leaders about because it's an interesting concept, which is actually still just unlimited PTO, but you would set a number that people must take that minimum number. It could be low, it could be 10, it could be high, like 40. And I've grappled with it a little bit because it's not that different than unlimited PTO. Um, But I'm curious about some of like the cycle. Right, right. So I'm curious about the psychological impact for people of knowing that there is a number you have to take. Does that actually mean people will take more time off to disconnect. Yeah, the earned thing I've heard people talk about because in previous lives, when you had 25 days or 15 days or whatever it was, and then you could roll over some, you knew how many days you had accrued, and then you knew how many you could roll over, and then you would get alerts. It's like, it's September, and you still have four days that you can't roll over if you want to use them, which is administrative and and does put a burden on someone's job. Um, but that's how people would view it. It's like, well, I've earned these days, they're mine to take. And so I have to take these days or I lose them. Whereas with unlimited PTO, they don't lose anything. And sometimes they don't really gain anything because it doesn't incentivize them to take time. Yeah, it's it's be interesting to see how some of the perks and benefits or not such so beneficial um, ideas are all going to be adapted in this post-COVID world where we're more hybrid and we're digital nomads living somewhere else where you're working. How, what else is going to evolve? I think uh, taking the step with comping people's commutes is a really awesome way to say we are just upending these practices that never made sense. But now we actually can can see them. The glasses are shattered. We can see how silly they were. 